live NFL trivia every Wednesday night on Twitch at 9 p.m. Eastern. Come show off your football knowledge for a chance to win cash prizes. Check the link in the description to find out more. And now, on with our feature presentation. I want to give you a hypothetical scenario. Suppose you're planning a birthday party, and it's going to be a pretty big deal. As in, you're going to invite quite a few friends and decorate the place a bit. You're talking to this friend about this party like crazy, and this friend of yours asks if she can help out with the party, to which you happily accept. So you talk with this friend and make decisions on certain things with the party, like how to arrange the furniture and what food to buy. This friend helps pick up the cake and comes with you to pick out decorations, and this friend puts together a great playlist for the event. Everything is going great. This friend has been there for you the whole time. And this friend is super excited about the party, and has been counting down the days, just like you have. And then, you tell this friend that, Oh yeah, by the way, you're not invited to the party. Sorry about that. You're not on the guest list. Seems like a horrible thing to do, right? And that's putting it lightly. You're a horrible person if you do that. Waste that person's time and get their hopes up like that, only to pull the rug out from beneath them. If you knew this the whole time, that you weren't going to invite this friend, then why did you drag them along for the ride? Why did you do this to them? Well, as awful as this sounds, something like this actually happened in college football when it came to bowl season. Because this team right here is West Virginia, and in 1983, they did an incredibly similar thing to this party analogy where they drag a bowl and bowl committee member along when they knew that not for one second were they ever going to accept this offer. And when the team found out about what the West Virginia administration was doing, oh man, it got ugly. It got really, really bad. Because this is the story behind what might just be the craziest and the ugliest bowl controversy in the history of the West Virginia Mountaineers football program. Before I talk about the actual incident and the controversy in question, we need some context to understand the bowl picture, and how West Virginia was playing and doing to even be in that conversation in the first place. The year is 1983, and one of the teams in college football that's taking the country by storm is the West Virginia Mountaineers. After back-to-back -back seasons under head coach Don Nealon, where they went 9-3 and, and made it to a bowl game, things were looking really good for West Virginia in 1983 as they were looking to build off of those two strong campaigns. Because after they entered the top 20 of the AP poll, following their first two games of the season, a 55-3 victory against Ohio, and a 48-7 victory against Pacific, they remained in the poll the entire time. And there was no going back. It seemed like the sky was the limit for them. Through the first 10 games of the season, West Virginia was looking like one of the best teams in the country, and was sitting pretty with an 8-2 record. Not only did they have multiple rank wins under their belt, but they had multiple rank wins on the road by double digits, defeating a number 17 ranked Maryland team on the road by a final score of 31 to 21, and following that up with a win against a number 19 ranked Boston College team on the road by a final score of 27 to 17. They had an amazing offense that was in the top quarter of the country in points scored, as through 10 games, they were averaging 28.6 points per game. Part of why they were so good was because of the play of their quarterback, Jeff Hostetler, who ranked inside the top 20 in all of college football with 14 touchdown passes, and inside the top 15 of the nation with a passer rating of 132.1. Heck, in one of their games against Pitt, they scored 24 points, which is impressive when you realize that at that point, Pitt's defense hadn't allowed a touchdown all season. And they also had an amazing defense that, much like the offense, was in the top quarter of the country in points allowed, allowing just 14.6 points per game through the first 10 games of the season. In 5 of their 10 games thus far, the defense allowed single-digit points, including 0 points in their 13-0 victory against the Virginia Tech team that finished the season inside the top 20 in points scored. Their run defense allowed just 2.7 yards per carry, and they were holding their opponents to just a 50% completion percentage, thanks in part to a secondary led by Tim Agee, who had six interceptions, which amongst players from all 23 independent schools in the nation, ranked second. Even though the Mountaineers had a bit of a slump in there, 
losing on the road by 18 points to an unranked Penn State team, and losing by 17 points on the road to a number 7 ranked Miami team, for much of the season, they were one of the best teams in the country. And at one point, following their 6-0 start, they were ranked number 4 in the nation, and were seriously in the hunt for the national championship. And it was very clear all season that for the third straight year, that even though West Virginia was an independent and technically didn't have a tie into a bowl like other conferences, that this was a Mountaineer team that was going bowling. No questions asked. That was never out of the question. Much like they went to the Peach Bowl in 1981 and the Gator Bowl in 1982, they were going to go to a bowl game in 1983. The question was what bowl game they were going to play in. And for the West Virginia players, it was very clear what they wanted. Because if you asked the players on the Mountaineers, they would have said two words. Citrus Bowl. During the season, as was typical back then, the players voted on what bowl game they wanted to play in, so that if the team got an offer from multiple bowls, they know which one the players preferred, and which one they would accept. And when the players voted, they listed the Fiesta Bowl as their number one choice, which made sense. That's like asking what bowl game a Pac-12 team wants to play in, and they list their number one choice as the Rose Bowl. But the number two choice was the newly named Citrus Bowl, formerly known as the Tangerine Bowl, and it made complete sense as to why. You got to play down in Orlando, which is quite the destination to go to. You got to go to Disney World, which had just opened up a second theme park just a year ago in Epcot. You got to play early, playing on December 17th, which meant that you were home for the holidays. And on top of that, you got a bowl game that was really changing the bar, upping the ante, and changing their game for the better, as they announced that they were raising their payout to the schools participating from $700,000 to a cool $1 million. Of the 15 bowl games from 1982, the Tangerine Bowl's payout of $700,000 ranked 12th, being 4th from the bottom. By going up to a million, it was now 7th, so it was in the top half of the bowls. It made a ton of sense as to why the players, especially West Virginia, wanted to escape the cold and go down to Orlando, if at all possible. And it's not just that West Virginia wanted to play in the Citrus Bowl. The Citrus Bowl also really wanted West Virginia to come to their game as well, since they knew that West Virginia fans travel well, and they knew that West Virginia was a really good team and the Citrus Bowl was committed to doing everything in their power to getting the Mountaineers to play in this game, treating them right every time a representative went up to Morgantown. A representative was there in Morgantown to watch the Mountaineers play Temple, and watch as West Virginia beat them by a final score of 27-9. And that wasn't the only time that the Citrus Bowl was scouting and recruiting West Virginia, as over the course of the season at that point, the Citrus Bowl scouted them six times. West Virginia played 10 games so far, and a Citrus Bowl representative was at a whopping 6 of them. If you picked a random West Virginia game in 1983, you were more likely than not to pick a game that a Citrus Bowl official was at. So let's just recap where we are right now. The players wanted to play at the Citrus Bowl. Again, it was their number 2 choice that was now their number 1 choice since the Fiesta Bowl was out of the picture. The coaching staff wanted to go to the Citrus Bowl, and the Citrus Bowl coveted West Virginia more than any other team in the nation, and coveted them more than any other bowl did. So after the Mountaineers won on their home field against Rutgers by a final score of 35-7 to improve to an 8-2 record, the Citrus Bowl extended an official offer to West Virginia to have them play in their bowl game. And when the Citrus Bowl extended this offer, the officials at West Virginia naturally, declined the invite. Seriously. West Virginia higher-ups decided that they were going to decline the invite, because the Citrus Bowl was too early in the schedule and interfered with final exams. But let me get this straight. You knew from day one that this game was taking place on December 17th. You knew from day one that this game was taking place on that date and might interfere with exams. It's not like this sprung up on you and they announced the date at the last minute. Literally, the only reason you turned down the Citrus Bowl was because it interfered with exams, and you knew that conflict well in advance. 
And yet, not only did you continue to express interest and never say no, but you let them come and travel a whopping six times, only to decline them for a reason that you knew about from the start. That's like talking about going on a cruise with your friend. You allow them to book everything and pay for everything. And then, when the day of the cruise comes, you back out because you hate cruises and get seasick. Like you knew that from the start. Why did you wait until the literal last second after you dragged them along when you knew that you were just going to say no this whole time? Again, the players had nothing to do with this, and the coaching staff had nothing to do with this. This was all done by higher-ups in administration. When it came to the football team, their hands were completely tied. As West Virginia President E. Gordon Gee said on all of this and the decision to turn the bowl down, it was not a simple decision. I know the players prefer the Citrus Bowl, but the date of the Citrus Bowl would have caused serious problems with their academic calendar. After conferring with Coach Nealon, the academic vice president of the university, members of the athletic staff within the university, members of the faculty senate, the chair of the athletic council, and other universities who have had similar problems in the past, I determined it would cause a great deal of difficulty. But the players were furious about this, because to say that they were angry at President G would be a massive understatement. And the main man who spoke for everyone on behalf of the players as the leader was none other than their starting quarterback, Jeff Hostetler, who had quite a few grievances to air at the administration and how unfair they were being. As Hostetler said on all of this, I think it was a gross injustice to the team that G turned down the bowl we wanted to go to. Those people from the Citrus Bowl were here all the time, and he knew the whole time that he wasn't going to accept a bid to that bowl. Why leave them on? Why have them waste their money coming to Morgantown? They were terrific to us. Then, when it came down to the wire, G turned them down flat. You can't do that. That's no way to treat people. He then continued, saying, We beat Pitt, and they're going to the bigger Fiesta Bowl. We beat Boston College, and they're going to the Liberty Bowl. And we beat Maryland, and they're going to the bowl we wanted to go to. That's tough to swallow. But Hostetler wasn't done yet, and wasn't done talking about how awful it was that the administration led them on, and how now the team had to play in the way less prestigious Hall of Fame Classic down in Birmingham. And by way less prestigious, I mean that wide receiver Rich Hollins flat out said that he had never even heard of the Hall of Fame Classic until they found out they were going to be playing in it, which is always a good sign. Hostetler said, It's pitiful when 120 guys in a coaching staff that have worked long and hard since August have no say in where they want to go. A lot of seniors talked to the other players and got their preferences. It's a shame that one man turns down the bowl they favored the most. And even though West Virginia won their bowl game, defeating an unranked Kentucky team, it was definitely not the ending to the season that everyone envisioned or hoped for, through no fault of their own. So what's the big takeaway from all this? Just be a decent human being and don't drag people along for no reason. It's not the right thing to do. If you knew you were going to decline the bowl bid due to an unavoidable conflict this entire time, and a conflict that easily could have been worked around since other schools have had similar issues, then just be upfront about it and just say so. Don't do whatever the heck West Virginia administrative officials did nearly four decades ago. What the administration did to the Citrus Bowl, to the players, and to the coaching staff was flat out wrong and was a sour end to what was otherwise a fantastic season up in Morgantown. Because when West Virginia beat Rutgers to improve to 8-2, the players were furious that they could not say, I'm going to Disney World. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jg9shop.com, and be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, and subscribe down below if you haven't already, as it helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check out Twitch every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.